Hello and welcome to a video where I'll be showing you and explaining how to create a smart dynamic anti-gravity system in Minecraft. Now, I first want to stress that this concept isn't fully my own. I know the comment section is bound to be full of people saying that I copied Zeppelin, and to clear this up, basically, I am, and that's because people have asked me to. I'm not claiming that this is my own thing, this is definitely Zeppelin's idea, I've made a few minor changes, but the general idea is his. I've just had a few requests and I thought it would be good just to help people understand the concept better that I'd make a tutorial about it. So, without any further ado, I'm going to explain the concept first. The idea is we have two structures where one is a flipped copy of the other, and we teleport players between the structures in order to make it seem like their environment is flipped. So, to start we're going to need to consider the structures. Now, the thing about this system that's superior to other anti-gravity systems is it really allows you to go wild with the designs. You can pretty much build anything and it should work fine. Now, the difference is most other anti-gravity systems only allow you to sort of have square rooms, but that's not the case. All you really need to take into consideration is the height of your structure. The taller it is, the larger the redstone will be. Right, so once you've built your puzzle, you need to flip it upside down. In order to do this, you need something like MC Edit or World Edit. In this case, I'll be using MC Edit. So, once you have your world open in that, simply go to the third tab along the bottom and translate a copy of your structure away from the original. But make sure to keep in mind the amount that you've moved it by. There are two ways you can flip the structure. You can choose the flip option when you copy it in the first place, or you can use Seth Blink's flip structures filter that will be linked in the description which, if it works, will provide a more optimised swap. If you flip it with the built-in algorithm that MC Edit has, you'll probably find that the half slabs and stairs will need adjusting by hand. Another thing you have to know is any changes made to one structure during play will have to be made to the other structure. For example, if you have a set of lamps turned on in one structure, they will need to be connected to the lamps in the other structure so that they would give the effect that it is actually causing a change. Anyway, let's get on to the redstone and more on how that works. Let's start off by considering what we actually need to happen. Well, we need to make sure the system knows whether the player is in the flip structure or the normal one, and we need it to teleport the player from the position that they are in to the same relative position in the other structure. What I mean by that is if a player swaps gravity while standing next to a lamp, the player needs to be teleported to the position next to the lamp in the other structure where the lamp is upside down. Anyway, the last of the problem is that the whole system needs to be activated remotely and needs to be very fast. Now, let's have a look at how to address these problems. Firstly, the way we're going to tell which structure the player is in is by using a dummy scoreboard objective and parameters. So, if you're unaware of what they are and how they work, then check out my ultimate guide to command block playlist on my channel. The scoreboard can be called anything, but the principle is that when a player is moved between the structures, the scoreboard data value changes between 1 and 0. So that when a player is in a certain structure, parameters checking for the min and max values of the scoreboard can see which direction they should be teleported in. So, for the second problem, we can split it into two different components, the relative y position and the relative x and z positions. Starting with the x and z axis, you can narrow it down even further by checking the way you've originally shifted your structure across, and therefore only considering that you need to manipulate this direction. So, if you were to move your structure in the x direction, you would only have to consider that, and you wouldn't have to relatively transform the player in the z direction. Alright, so the way we deal with relative coordinates is if we use the regular tp command, except we put a tilde symbol in front of the coordinate axis that we want to be editing in relation to the player's position. If you don't know, the tilt symbol can be obtained by shift clicking the hashtag button next to the enter button on most computers. Anyhow, if you combine this with the solution to the previous issue, you should be able to teleport the player between the structures using the difference of positions of the structures. Moving on, the problem concerning the y coordinates is a little bit more complicated because the structures are flipped. This means that when the player is in the top of one of the structures, they need to be at the bottom of the other when teleported, and vice versa. Also, if the player is in the middle, then they don't want to have their y coordinate changed at all. Right, so the first step towards achieving this is by using command blocks to detect the elevation of the player. However, the thing is that command blocks use spheres to generate ranges to detect players in. So, in order to find the individual height, we need to use really large spheres that are centered around a point very high up, so the players on the ground rest on the very edges of them. Allow me to explain this further. There are two parameters that concern the radius of detection, and three that concern the position that the sphere is centered at. These are the x, y, z coordinates of the sphere, and the radius of the sphere and the minimum radius of the sphere. What this essentially means is we can hollow out the sphere of detection so that it only detect players on the edge of the sphere. Now, at this point you may be wondering why this is useful. Well, well, because if I make this sphere of detection very large and the position of it very high up in the sky, because Minecraft is a blocky game, the part of the sphere that is classed at the bottom will have such a sort of curvature that it will essentially be, for Minecraft's sake, considered flat. And if we're only detecting one layer of this flat bottom, you may be able to see where I'm going with this. So all that's left to do is layer a bunch of these detection spheres on top of one another, so the, these essentially flat bottom layers make up an individual height detection system. 
Once you've done that, all you really need to do is make sure that you're teleporting players at the right level to the elevation they should be in the other structure. So, for those of you who don't know, empty maps and full maps are completely different items, and the clear command can be used to only remove maps that come into the player's inventory. This means that if the empty map is used, and it turns into a map, it will trigger some redstone. Hence, if they are a certain location and they have the right score on their dummy scoreboard objective, and obtain the map, then a certain command bot will cause the certain effect to play place. So, the system itself is comprised of four command bots for each layer of the region you're testing for. One for checking if the player's clicked on their empty map and gets a map, one for teleporting them to the correct coordinates, another for changing their score to 1 or 0 respectively, and a final one to replace the empty map they lost. So now let's run over and discuss the commands in the block. In the first command block we have this command shown on screen. As you can see it's a clear command clearing all of item 358, which is of course our map. Anyway, if we turn our attention to the parameters we can see the first three values are the x, y and z coordinates of the centre of the circle. Right, so notice the y coordinate is 10,056. This is significant because the height of the ground I was working on was 56, hence the circle is centered a thousand blocks upwards. This leads on to the RM and R parameters. As you can see, R is equal to 1001 and RM is equal to 1000, hence the difference between these is 1 and it causes the sphere to be hollow. Lastly, there's just the score value parameters. In my contraption, I use the tag grav to ID which orientation the player was in. So obviously, this is just one example. If the player was in the different orientation, the graph value would have to be equal to 1, not 0. And, if the player was at a different height, the command bot with a higher center of detection would activate. So, to detect the layer 1 above, it would have to be at a y value of 1057, not 1056. So, you can now see why so many command blocks are needed to account for all the different situations that could occur. Anyway, the second, third and fourth command blocks all activate simultaneously, but we'll go through them individually anyway. The second is responsible for teleporting the player to their appropriate location. As you can see, my original structure was translated in the z direction, so there's no need to change the x coordinate and the command reads tilde 0. Now, you can see that the y value doesn't have a tilde in front of it, and instead differs by having a point 0. So the reason for this is because you need to manually put in all the appropriate values for this based on your situation. If the command has been activated by someone at the lowest possible elevation, they need to be TP to the highest possible elevation, and the same applies for vice versa and everything in between. The last part is the tilde 19, and this is just the difference between the two structures I'd made. Alright, so almost there. For command block 3, we simply set all the players with a grab value 0 to 1, or vice versa, so that the appropriate command block will activate. And finally, for command block 4, we give all the players back an empty map. So, that's the entire process of mechanic explained. Now I'm just going to give you one close look at the actual example of the machine I built. As you can see, there may be twice as many command blocks as you'd expect there to be. The reason for this is because I wanted it to be as responsive as possible. The entire thing basically runs on a one tick computer clock, which means that every other tick, the system checks to see if the map has been used. I duplicated the whole device and made one set to activate one tick after the other, so at any moment in time, it's accurate to a single tick. Anyhow, this has been quite a long video and I've done my best to explain a quite complicated concept. Hopefully you guys understand why this video took me so long, and I've done my best to help you visualise it, but if you still don't understand, I'll be happy to answer your questions in the comment section below. So that's all the time for today. If you've enjoyed, a like or subscription would be awesome. Anyway, I'd like to thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.